Hello and welcome to this section of the MATLAB Tutor. Here we're going to begin to talk about vectors in MATLAB. And in truth, um, vectors and matrices really form the core of MATLAB. In fact, the name of MATLAB is, is uh, Matrix Laboratory. The MAT means Matrix Lab. Vectors and matrices are basically the same thing. And so the core of what we're going to learn here and also with matrices, it really forms the core of how you use the program. So we need to crawl before we walk. Let's talk about how do we actually enter a vector. You know, in physics or in, in some sort of mechanics class, typically we learn about vectors in terms of x, y, and z at first, right? x component, y component, z component. So you might see something like, you know, 3 uh, in the x direction plus 2 in the y direction, you know, plus 3 in the z direction. Now, of course, I can't type it on my keyboards, but this would be like 3 in the x direction hat direction that little the little uh, house on top means unit vector um, two in the y direction and three in the z direction or in you know in most physics classes actually you use i j and k right so you have to kind of envision these little hats above the i j and k because i can't type them but basically that's what they are so three in the in the i direction which is x two in the j which is y three in the z which is k and we write that down when we do our math but really, when you think about it, the only thing that really matters here are the numbers. I mean, if you, all, if you always know that when you talk about vectors, you're talking about x, y, and z, if you, if you know that you're always going to be talking about x, y, and z, then you really don't even need these labels. The only thing that really matters is going to be the uh, 3 uh, and the 2 and the 3 over here, right? So in MATLAB, we don't write vectors in terms of how I have it here. We don't say 3 in the i direction plus 2 in the j direction plus 3 in the k direction. We don't write it like that. In fact, if you if you just hit enter here, MATLAB isn't going to have any idea what you're talking about. It, it probably thinks that you know i is some variable and j is some variable and k is some variable. It doesn't know that this is a vector at all. So the way you define your vectors, if I were going to write this as a vector, if I were going to store this vector, uh, and name it x, right? Then what you need to do is open a bracket. All vectors are stored inside of brackets. So if I wanted to represent what I have here in terms of a vector, I would put 3 space 2 space 3 and then I would close the bracket off. This represents a vector in MATLAB. You put the spaces between so it separates the numbers and MATLAB knows that the first number is, a, is separate from the second number is separate from the third number. And so if you hit enter, MATLAB is going to repeat back to you, okay, the variable x is now not just a number, that, that, that variable x is associated with it three numbers. And we just call those vectors in math, right? Now if you go off and look here at the, at the variable workspace over here, um, you'll see that x has not just one value, like usually if we do y is equal to 2 or something like that, then we have a value of a single value here. Now we don't have a single value associated with x. We have several values, 3, comma 2, comma 3. And if you scroll over for the single variable, 2 for y, it tells you the minimum and the maximum is 2. Here it tells you the minimum is 2 for this vector and the maximum is 3 because there's a range of values here and it's telling you the min and the max. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you haven't ever done this kind of thing with a computer before, it may confuse you at first a little bit. But what we've basically done is associate with a variable more than one number. And it's it's this package we call a vector. Now, that is basically the essential essential part of it. If I want to overwrite y and, and create a new vector, then I could do, you know, 0 space 2 space 5 and close that off and hit enter. Then I'm going to have a, a, a vector y which is basically going to be you know, 0, 2, 5, which is what I have right here. And if I scroll over, then I have the min and the max for that that's reflected uh, right there. Now, I want to take just a few minutes to talk to you philosophically a little bit about computers because you know, when, you, when you're doing a lot of math in, in college classes, you're always talking about vectors in the context of x, y, z, x, y, z. That's kind of what we always, we always use them for because it's so convenient you know if we're if we're trying to do you know um, the uh, trajectory of a ball or something like that flying through the air we might have an x component in this case the x component is zero so maybe it's not traveling along x and then we have a y component here so it's traveling in the y direction with this you know speed or something and then in the z direction maybe this is how fast it's going up 
you know, towards towards the sky. So the three numbers represent something physically important. It's the speed in the x direction, the speed in the y direction, and the speed in the z direction. Usually we're using vectors to compute those quantities. Um, now you can use MATLAB for that purpose, no problem. We've, we've assigned if if we were if we were doing a problem that had a ball, then maybe one ball, the the ball, the first ball, we're going to label it x, and we're going to put a vector together that represents its speed x, y, and z. Maybe we have a separate ball y. Here's its speed in x, y, and z. Right. So we can use MATLAB to store the vector values and do the math behind it. Um, just like we do, you know, your physics homework or your mechanics homework, uh, we can use that no problem. Notice that we don't have to tell it that this is x and that direction and that this is y direction and that this is the z direction. That MATLAB doesn't really care about the label. See, that's something you apply in your problem, something that makes sense in your physical problem. MATLAB only cares about the three numbers. It just knows that it has, you know, element one element 2 and element 3 of a vector. The actual directions don't really matter so much because that's sort of defined in your problem. So uh, I just wanted to point that out to you because a lot of people when they start dealing with vectors in MATLAB they start trying to assign directions and components and things like that and to kind of have it all labeled on, on the screen but you don't really need to know that. For instance if I'm going to dot these two things together if I'm going to dot X and Y together which I'll do in future lessons it, it MATLAB doesn't really need to know that this is X, Y, and Z, and that this is X, Y, and Z, because what all that really matters is element one, element two, element three, and it knows what to do math-wise. All right. So what I'm leading up to here is if I want to to um, to create another vector, let's call it Jason. See, these vector names don't have to be single letters; it could be anything we want. I'll call it Jason. See, up to this point, I've been talking about X, Y, Z, you know, for a vector. Um, but you know what? In MATLAB, you can. It doesn't have to be three dimensions, right? So you could have two, five, four, seven, nine, or eight, nine, and you know, eleven. Or let's do 114. We'll close the bracket off. So this is a vector. We're going to call it a vector JSON. I want to hit enter. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements to this. This is something you may not be that terribly familiar with in math. Um, unless you're some, you know, computer programmers deal with this a lot. See, this is also called a vector. It just has more than three, more than three elements to it. You know, you can have a hundred elements to a vector or a thousand elements to a vector. They're basically just a listing of numbers. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, in terms of math and science, when you learn physics, you're always taught that vectors represent these quantities in three-dimensional space. So they always have x, y, z. So a lot of students. They start using vectors thinking it's this thing that applies to X, Y, Z. Well, in the terms of MATLAB, you can certainly use them to deal with problems in X, Y, Z, like these vectors we've defined up here. But there's many cases when you just need to deal with a whole list of numbers at once, right? Maybe this is the population of, you know, uh, different hair color, you know, in, a, in an auditorium full of people. That would mean that you'd have to have a listing of numbers. You know, maybe there's two redheads. Um, three or five people with black hair, uh, four people with orange hair, seven people with yellow hair, 114 people with brown hair. Maybe you need to store that in terms of a vector because you're going to do some kind of statistical analysis on it. So you would store it in what we call a vector. So anytime in MATLAB help, when you read about vectors, you know, it's probably a good exercise. Let's open this up right now. Let's type in vector. Let's see what pops up. We should get lots of things dealing with vectors because MATLAB is all about vectors, right? The position vector, all these things here. If you're if you're reading anything about a vector, see here's a vector to find up at the top here. If you're reading anything about a vector in help, it just means one of these listing of numbers. That's all it means. So Gibson, you could define it to be a vector negative five, um, five point five, three, six, nine, negative eight point two five, right? It's just a listing of numbers, right? So you can see that there's elements. Here's element one, element two, element three. So I guess what I'm trying to say is start conditioning, start conditioning yourself. Stop thinking about vectors in terms of x and y and z. I mean, that's fine for your physics homework and, and your mechanics and things like that. That's OK. But in terms of MATLAB, you need to start thinking about, OK, this is a vector. It's a listing of numbers. This is element one, element two, element three, element four, element five, element six and start to dissociate with disassociate it a little bit from the rigid XYZ definition of what you think a vector is.
Okay, so now we have several vectors already defined. I've got X, I've got Y, I've got Gibson, and I've got Jason here. So let me clear the screen real quick. And I want to show you something that's pretty important. Now, in this vector X, there's three elements. The first element is three, the second element is two, and the third element is three. Let me put that back on the screen to show you. I'll just hit X and I'll put those elements of that vector back on the screen. Maybe I've done some complicated calculation and I've arrived at an answer. This is the answer right here. This vector is the answer. But let's say that I only want, let's pretend this is X, Y, and Z like we were talking about before. Maybe I only want the Y component, the middle component. The way you retrieve that is you type in the vector name, parentheses, two. When you see the ve vector name and put a parentheses with a number, what you're asking MATLAB to do is return the second element. Give me the second element of this vector. So it's going to go in there, fetch the two, and return that to you. That is the second element. If I put parentheses three in there, it's going to return the third element of vector x. If I put parentheses one there, it's going to represent and, and return to me the first element of vector x. And the same thing applies to all of these vectors. If I clear the screen again, this is vector JSON that we had that we stored before. But if I type in JSON and say, okay, I don't, I only want element five. That's the only one I really care about. So it's going to go, here's element one, two, three, four, five. There it is. It's going to spit it back at you. That's very convenient because you have to, you have to think about, I mean, you might say, why do you care about that? You can see the whole vector here. That's true. But maybe you're doing some calculation down the road where, um, maybe let's do, let's put JSON back on the screen. Maybe you need to take element two of this vector, whatever it is, and multiply it by element, you know, five or whatever. So in, instead of reading it off the screen and typing that calculation in manually, maybe you have a computer program that you write inside of MATLAB doing this. So maybe you could say JSON two um, multiplied by JSON four, right? So what this is saying is take the second element of this vector, which is this number, and multiply it by the fourth element of this vector, which is this number. So seven times five is 35. So it's gonna go grab those pieces of information from the vector and do the math that you have here. So you might have JSON one, and you might divide by it JSON six. So you might do some division or something like that, and it'll take the two, because that's the first element, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and divide it by nine. So if you want to check that, two divided by nine is 0.222. So that's all it's doing there. So two very important things that we've learned so far in this lesson. How do you input a vector? We've learned about how to do that, and how to extract individual elements from a vector um, which you'll be using you know, quite a bit in terms of using MATLAB and also writing MATLAB programs. One more thing I want to show you before we close this, this introductory lesson on vectors. So we've entered the vectors into the command window here and every time we add a new one, right, you know, I could say uh, Earth, you know, I could like this, add a new vector, Oop, gotta have an equal sign in there. And every time we add a new vector, it pops up over here automatically into the workspace area. And up until now, this workspace area has just been something I've showed you that, that just keeps track of all the current variables that you have and their values. And of course, we've talked a little bit about the fact that it tells you the min and the max. Well, you don't really need to use it too much, but I did want to point out to you that this is also a convenient way to edit the values of these variables if you need to. And let me show you what I mean. Let me type in a variable, you know, a, and I'm just going to put a single number in there, 4. I'm going to put A is equal to 4. So here we have A is equal to 4. Now, if I double click on this, I'll double click it, and what happens is a variable editor window pops up. Notice it looks like a spreadsheet. It looks, looks like something you might use in some kind of like office environment or something like this. And notice the value of 4 is the only element in here. Um, that has any numbers in it, that's because this variable just, just contains a single number. If for whatever reason I want to change the value of this variable, I can do it right here. I can change that value of the variable to 6. So I'll click off, it'll accept the 6, and then I can just close this window with the big X, it'll disappear, and notice the value of the variable has changed to 6. Like this. Okay? So it, it, it gives you a, a convenient way to do that. Now for single values, single values of, uh, of variables, I mean, it doesn't really make any sense to, to edit the values over here. I mean, we can just reassign, you know, the values over here in the command window. However, let's look at uh, vector Gibson here. It's got lots of values here. 
Um, now I can, I can pull this up and see, okay, here's, here's element over here, the, the element 8.000, maybe that's not quite right. If I want to change that for some reason, I can double click it and notice that all of the values that correspond to the elements of this vector are here. So maybe I want to change this element and I want to change it to, you know, negative 25 or something like that. I can accept that value, I can hit close and notice that it's reflected here. So if I type in Gibson again, that value has changed. So this workspace over here, it tells you what currently is in memory as far as the variables. It also gives you the quick ability to make changes if you like. So this isn't something that you'll probably do too much, but it does have uses. I mean, for instance, what if you wanted to create a vector that was um, that had a lot of, you know, uh, very small or very large numbers. In other words, 5.5 .5 times 10 to the power of 5. Okay, that's a pretty big number. Let's do 6.25 times 10 to the power of, you know, 7. Maybe this one over here is, we'll just do something that we'll just highlight everything like that. And then maybe we'll do, you know, negative 2.5 times 10 to the negative 17th or something like this. Very small and very large numbers. Certainly we could go into the command window and we can type this stuff in into our vector, but if you have lots and lots and lots of very small and big numbers, then it might be a lot to type into the command window. So you can just go and, and enter it here, hit X. So now let me clear the screen and if I type in Gibson, and that vector is basically represented here. Now you might look at this and say, well, this vector, the elements of this vector doesn't really line up with what we typed in here. But when you, re when you really look at what MATLAB is doing is, it's because of the way the, um, the decimals are truncated. It doesn't quite look right. In fact, it's got one times 10 to the seven. So it's got a very large um, one with several zeros after it multiplied by all these elements. If you change your format to something like long ENG, we've talked about that, those different format modifiers, for instance, then you can see that Gibson has all of the proper values in there. So this is negative five, uh, and then you have all of these other values. The last one here was negative 25 times 10 to the, to the minus 18. So it's representing the same values that we basically typed in there. Um, you know, you might use this workspace to create a very large vector, or in the future lessons we talk about matrices, you might use it to, to create a very large matrix. Um, it's not something you're going to use too much. Most of the time when you define a vector, you'll just, you know, you'll just type a vector yo-yo and just put the values in there like that and then operate on them. So that's going to close it off for this section now. And uh, notice here we type this yo-yo uh, here. The, the values here are have lots and lots of zeros here because we changed the format. If we type format short and then look at the value of yo-yo, then we have the 444 that we typed in there. So it's just a good, good example of how the format modifiers can change the way things look, but it's the same values. I hope you've uh, gotten something out of this lesson. Vectors are super central to everything in MATLAB, so make sure you understand it, and then go on in and play with them, define them, and then if you need to extract a value, then we talked about that, yo-yo, we can extract the second value and get the middle value here which is the second element of that vector there. Follow me on to the next section where we'll talk about adding, subtracting vectors and doing more complicated functions that involve vectors.